great to have you join us in another edition of Capital Market, a review of week two of the second quarter of uh, 2024. I'm Ladi Williams. Let's uh, begin with uh, a review of the top markets uh, we track in the global space. Now, see European markets close slightly higher uh, on Friday as investors uh, digest the UK economic data and reflected on a somewhat murky US inflation outlook. Uh, we see the DAX, uh, that was uh, down about 0.13%. Uh, the FTSE was up 0.19%. Um, um, that's in uh, Europe. Well, on, uh, in the U.S. now, we see stocks um, sold off as inflation and uh, geopolitical worries. Once again, dented investor sentiment on Wall Street. A broad decline in major bank shares also weighed on the market. See the Dow Jones down by 1.24%. Uh, the Nasdaq uh, was down 1.62%. Well, the S&P um, 500 was down. 1.46%. Uh, uh, Let's take it on to Asia now. See, Asia-Pacific markets were mixed after an inflation-fueled sell-off. In a previous session, with investor, investors assessing economic data from Singapore and uh, South Korea. We see the, the Nikkei was uh, up by 0.21%, while the Shanghai Composite uh, was down 0.49%. The Hang Seng Index, a uh, big uh, mover down 2.18%. And back here in Nigeria, the NASD OTC securities market's performance ended the week negative as the index fell by 5.19% week to date, while the market's um, overall value dropped 5.19%. At the same time, the volume of securities traded uh, was up by 97%, uh, while value traded was up 81%, while the number of deals carried out, uh, that was at uh, 37. Top advances for the week, uh, Afriland Properties and Capital Hotel PLC, while the top decliners are Geofluids PLC, um, Double One PLC, and Friesland Campino Amco Nigeria PLC. And to the list of market now, the market uh, opened for two trading days this week as the federal government uh, declared Tuesday and uh, Thursday, so up to Thursday's public holidays to commemorate Idel uh, Fitri celebrations. While the NGX All Share Index uh, market cap does down by 1.09%. Uh, to close the week at 102,314 points. And we see the market cap at 57.86 um, trillion. Meanwhile, a uh, total turnover of 1.13 billion shares, what, 28 billion, 21,000 deals were traded this week uh, by investors on the floor of the exchange. Uh, financial services counter were both down. That's banking and insurance, including most of the counters we track. Uh, we see the banking big 7.22% drop. Uh, trading in the top three equities, namely United Bank for Africa PLC, Zenit Bank PLC, and Abbey Mortgage Bank uh, were uh, the top trades for the week, accounting for about 447 um, billion shares traded. All right, let's get a review of uh, happenings in the market. Now, it was a shortened holiday week, but yeah, trades still happen. Two days and the market is down. Um, joining us now is Mukta Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mukta, joining us right here in the studio. Um, I guess uh, it's, it's safe to say happy end of the holidays, <laughs> but you know the weekend is here, and you're here with us. Thank you for that. Thank you for having me. Um, not a bad, not a bad outing, but it was bad. Down 1.09 percent, even though we didn't have much trading days, you know, in the week. But let's kick off the conversation with um, another currency right now that's looking really good. I'm talking about the naira. It's looking to be the best. Uh, performing uh, currency in the world in the world you know at this point from where we're from, coming from, from the worst performing from the worst performing so it's a, it's a nice uh way to you know break that trend but how you seen and uh, the performance so far we're seeing uh, more bullish forecasts from goldman sachs they did talk about 1002 we did hit that and now they're talking sub 1000 how you seen it uh, it's very positive for the naira we've looked forward to this day and finally this year and when you look at, um, I know why everybody's bullish about the Naira. Again, when you look at um, uh, some policy that have been rolled out by the CBA, I remember the, the dollar domination, dominated um, um, loans that collaterals that must be converted to Naira within the next 90 days. That will add liquidity into the system. 
Uh, you mustn't forget that um, Dangote refinery also is bringing down the pressure on the Naira because of diesels now. At least diesel is not being imported into this country any longer. That has also impacted the price of diesel coming down by um, slightly, but hopefully it will continue to go down. Um, also, you, you also have to give it to the uh, intervention of the CBA and also via the BDCs. Also, you see those, those three policies have really uh, ticked the market. Uh, and again, uh, despite the, 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 the news that uh, we're not, we are not somehow um, producing, we didn't meet our quota, but yet, uh, when you look at other sentiment there, then you look at the foreign direct investment, um, in portfolio investors, the hot money, they are, they are back, and the, the numbers look good. And so then again, you look at, when you look at those numbers, you remember, uh, you just look at foreign investment, 41% local in terms of um, 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 Nigerian and diaspora remit, and uh, 51%. So it's really, really, I mean, 59% is really looking good. And so, there is a lot of happening in the Naira. The Naira is um, liquidity has been the challenge. So there seems to be a lot of dollar liquidity in the market chasing so little Naira these days. Right. So and I, I remember when the when the Naira um, lost uh, a lot of value to about 1,800 um, to the dollar. I remember most people come to me and say, you know what, I, I, it's time to, you know, sell all the Naira they have and stash off and, and get uh, some dollars at this point we see some people actually made those kind of trades you know back then and i'm wondering is this the time to go all in um naira is, is, is it because I, I know some people might still be holding dollars hoping trying to bet against the naira you know at this point what do you think there are speculators speculators speculators, speculators exactly. are always in the market so it depends on how how much they've got their fingers burned um those that bought at 1900 have got their finger re -bond. Some of them were anticipating the Naira to get to like 2,500. Some even said it could even hit 5,000 in the next two years. So, um, definitely, like we said in one of the programs, the only time the Naira seems to make value again is when you bring it back to, I mean, dollar seems to make value for you. When you bring it back to Naira, it's not that because, again, you, you're just keeping it there, seeing it grow. Inflation in the UK, inflation in the US is still high, about um, some percentage. So, you're not even making that percentage in the dollar. But again, for, for investors, I think it's, it's a good time to begin to get into the, the Naira uh, asset if, if you are not there already. Because again, if you are still holding the dollar, I mean, you are really, really holding it and with your, with your, with your hands in your mouth because you know that um, the government is so optimistic about the bullish one and Goldman Sachs seems to follow through. Remember the thing Goldman Sachs said that towards the end of the year, we could see the Naira settle for 1,200. it's not the end of the year. It's yeah. not yet the end of the year. We're just into the second quarter of the year. And Goldman Sachs said, okay, we could see it's trading under 1,000. So if that is to go by, if what they said, then 1,002 at when it was 1,008, then now they are saying it could straight under at 1,002. You could be saying, when we see the Naira hit 750, 600? 750, 600. That was, that, that's quite a number. You know, definitely we're looking forward to that. And this is coming at a week uh, where the, the DXY, that's the dollar index, that has rallied, you know, this week to about 106 points. And it's all the same story about uh, rate cuts. Yeah. <laughs> we'll push the rate and and, and one other thing I didn't talk about is don't forget the recapitalization of the banks is also going to draw a lot of inflow of dollar into the Nigeria economy. Remember, they're giving the bank two years. But I can assure you, the bank will achieve that within the next one year. Uh, why am I saying that? Because most of the target of the CBN is not because um, the banks are not really highly capitalized. That's why they're saying, don't use your, don't use your, 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 your earnings, uh, retained earnings, don't use your shareholders when we need new funds. Because Zenith Bank have led the way by saying that, look, we are going to go to international capital market to get fund. And when you say you're going to international capital market, that means you're, in, you're going to bring in FX into the economy. And we're not talking about one, two, three banks. We're talking about almost 25 banks. So um, anybody holding the, the, the dollar now is not good news. Not good news, not good news. right here, even though the, the dollar is actually rallying in the global market. You know, the global market plays space between the dollar rallying the global market all has to do with the trade data that are coming from the U.S., especially between U.S. and China. So that seems to be a little bit positive, a little bit uh, apprehension in the U.S. going forward. They are going into an election year, and it doesn't seem to be like going to be a very close election with what is happening on around. So uh, I think the, Naira, uh, the dollar will enjoy that to other currencies because there seems to be an upbeat in terms of um, if um, um, the, 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 the Republican click it, 
going by his sentiment of um, when he was there the first time, how he, he said America first. So definitely that seems to be what is driving that. Yeah, politics uh, pushing all of that uh, play right now. But I'm um, talking about the bank recapitalization now. Uh, we did uh, see um, GTCO. Uh, they announced they're trying to raise about $750 million. That's proposed Nigerian bank uh, capital raises. I will see Zenith, $500 billion. Uh, FBNH is talking about $300 billion. Um, now, Access Bank, $365 um, billion. So um, I'm wondering, how do you play this, you know, at this time? I'm, so, I'm, I'm excited, you see. Gitiko is saying 750 they're, they're talking dollars. dollars. So definitely. Um, others will actually be looking at dollar. I can assure you that we may have oversubscription. And then you could see some of them will we, we have to absorb it back. I mean, they may get above the 500 billion that they are looking at. Remember, some of them don't even need up to 500 billion. Um, like GTCO, they don't need up to 500 billion, but they are saying one 500 billion. The same thing with Assets Corporation, the same thing with Zenet. And remember, not to forget that Zenet is going to a holding company. So that's also those funds will have to come in handy also building their holding company. It's good news, like I said, the target of this is um, the CBN is, is, is trying to use um, 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 policies to drive the, the Naira increase, um, the, 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 the dollar to the Naira, because this is going to bring in a lot of inflow. Because I, my own challenge is that we may just see a lot of foreigners having a chunk of the Nigerian banks compared to the locals, because I don't think the locals will be in a good position to buy land job if you look at the economic situation. And then the other way around is you, you might build more, 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 more one-house shareholders. We could get more the elite owning most of this share, rather becoming um, big-time shareholders of this bank compared to where you have both everybody there. So that's what I think will happen. But again, um, in the short term, that looks good. Um, to, the, to, the, to, to the general market itself is, is good, is bullish for the market, even if the activities have not started yet. But hopefully, we, we, we hope that, um, I, I think maybe after the half year results, we might begin to see those activities run into maybe their full year. And at that time, starting with 20, the next um, financial year, we might just see all those funds comes in, in the long term. But for now, I think um, investors need not to worry. Um, there's uh, the watch on local liquidity you're looking at Zenet Bank have an AAP any per share of almost um, sub, sub, almost um, I think about 20, 20 something naira any per share and so uh, uh, shareholders will be excited because most of these any per shares are not even going into the recapitalization so those earnings are still there so that means investors in most of these banks will still be optimistic of having bumper um, dividend payout like what they are enjoying now so and they of course will be an improvement from uh, banks like UBA remember UBA is not even thinking about holding company he still wants to stand alone. And then Zenith Bank has paid the largest um, uh, sh um, dividend ever they paid to their shareholders. So we expect them to may just stand there or improve upon that. We expect a lot of improvement from GTCO because um, the dividend is poor and you saw the market responded to it. So um, going forward, there's a lot of activities that won't be happening in the capital market. Maybe and I'm wondering how an investor should play, you know, most of these activities we're seeing in the market right I, now. I, I think for investors, for local investors, there's no better time to play, especially if you have lost out before now, especially if you were in the market sometime in 2003 when the first of all came, and at 2008, um, you, you ran out of the market because the market went down and a lot of people never came back again. But I think this time will be different because um, the regulators, that's my fear, should be... A, a, a billion a, a, a billion dollars regulator because we are going for billions so the regulators you shouldn't have a situation whereby banks begin to dabble in where they are not supposed to do like what happened and then begin to incur a lot of losses the regulators just left them because they had so much funds i think where it would come is that the regulator will really need to monitor those funds especially when the cbn governor said he want the bank to capitalize so that they can take advantage of the one trillion dollar economy that they are trying to build to do high ticketing uh, uh, um, trade and businesses so i hope they'll be able to monitor them and real and uh, make sure that some of these investments are in the real sector that will create jobs, that will cause a snowball effect in every sector of the Nigerian economy. Because Rather not, than the recapitalization is not just about you know increasing your capital. Yeah, we need we need those loans and those monies to be channeled into the real especially, sector. Especially especially when we are trying to diversify. 
Today, I just um, um, listened to the news where it's, um, Saudi Arabia have diversified almost their earnings. Um, about 50% of their earnings came in from the non oil sector. That is huge. And when you look Coming at. from Saudi from Arabia. From Saudi Arabia. And then when you look at what they are, what, what they are in, where those earnings came from, came in from, came in from entertainment, came in from esports, came in from um, tourism. You, you could see the innovation, and they are trying to use their oil uh, income to begin to build other stream of income. So Saudi Arabia now is almost like immune to, to, to any oil shock. And so they can afford to sell their oil at any price because it's just 50% now. You, you could go for they are looking at almost 80% of their revenue coming from the non-oil sector. Nigerians should just key into that and begin to look at when this fund comes in, what type of investment we will be attracting. We will still be going to the extractive sector, just looking at the oil sector, or try to boost other sectors that we know we have a lot of potentials, and now the resources is there to, to go forward with it. So even though we get all of those uh, reports you know, from OPEC about maybe reduction in um, oil production, it doesn't really affect you know, our FX uh, going forward. That's why we need to... That's why we need to diversify. diversify. For sure. But we'll continue the conversation. We see the food guys didn't do pretty well, you know, this week, even though it was a holiday shortened week. But we'll find out um, why. Just at a moment, uh, we'll be back uh, in a few minutes. I still have with me uh, Mukta Mohammed. Do stay with us. Welcome back to watching Capital Market Live on Channels Television. I still have with me right here uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO of Finance uh, with uh, Mukhtar. We're talking about the banks, and uh, we're still going to talk about the banks, you know, at this point. Um, looking at the Fugas uh, week performance, this week, Axis Bank down about 14.6%, uh, um, GTCO down 13.8% for the week, First Bank level 0.2%, UBA marginal 0.75%. Uh, percent, even though that's still uh, quite a number at this point, and we're still seeing sell-offs, you know, at this point, even though... Well, know, we, we, well sometimes when you see these numbers, you tend to think um, that's how it is. Uh, for assets, like where's the bottom at yeah, this point? For, for, for assets bank, counter? for assets bank, you remember they were marked down for dividends. So you, that's why you saw these numbers about minus 14.6%. From GTCO, yeah, with that, you see the investors' reaction over their poor dividend payout. Um, so you saw those numbers come down for First Bank. Is still, it was really overvalued for most investors. Is it that First Bank was really overvalued. At the point, it was doing 37 Naira, coming down to 28 Naira. I mean, 29 Naira, so they still hope for it. I mean, it might still continue to suffer. Because when you look at that bank, you look at them, um, they've not even paid their investors last year dividend. There's still a court case as regards the holding, who is the largest shareholder. So there seems a lot of things happening in First Bank. For UBA, despite their impressive result, but even before the impressive result, the stock was um, suffering a little, but after that result, they seems to be the only financial stock that gained at the close of market on Friday, which means that the results uh, is, is, uh, impressed in investors. So definitely, uh, like I've said, um, those, those, those were responsible uh, for that. But now when you're talking about, is it the best time to go into this? I think a lot of investors are beginning to look at if these banks are going to come to raise money, uh, so how much more are they planning to raise, what will be their share capital, via and via their profit, will, will they be deploying this money to, um, these funds to make more money, how they're going to deploy it with the kind of high risk uh, uh, micro economy environment that we are in. So a lot of things are running around, around the minds of investors at this moment. So definitely, um, that's what investors are looking at. And what you see is that some investors are beginning to exit uh, the capital market and beginning to look for fixed income space to put their money and by and by that things how they can get some some so-called the fixed income space and when this bank comes up with most of their uh, um, whether public uh, public uh, placement or private placement or whatever they come up with they will be able to also have fun to to also eat part cake of this so it's all about the strategy of an investor at this moment so uh, the, the high net investors are just sitting there collecting their dividend and putting their up their money also in the money market so that they can get more funds to come back again, especially when they don't know what is really going to be the value in terms of those banks, how much will we be buying them? So some, some investors might be, you know, taking profit now so they can also, you know, put back. Yeah, know. the investors will be taking profit now because they know that some of these banks are also going to come back to the market. They will still want to have part of these banks. Um, now remember that some of them will be taking profit 
um, by also have, must have collected some of the dividend. And then some of them, again, when you look at what they have made from where they are coming from, remember before now, a bank like um, GTCO was about seven naira, the advent of President Tinubu. A bank like UBA was about six naira. Um, GTCO was about 15 naira. Then um, Zenet Bank was about um, 14 naira. There about. So since he came in, we've seen those stocks move to an all time high. At a point, GTP, G GTCO did 53 naira. So a, a lot of investors have made so much appre capital appreciation. They've also en enjoyed interim dividend. Remember that they paid one of the best interim dividends over most of them, highest some of like GTCO, like um, UBA, like um, Zenet Bank. So there's a lot of uh, positivity most of these investors have really enjoyed. And again, when you study the Nigeria market, what most investors have seen in the Nigeria market is that it comes a point whereby the market seems to have a slowdown when this dividend begins to come in. And you begin to see, instead of this stock going up, it seems to retire a little. And so some of them that have taken some of this profit out are looking towards the close of this register of these banks in terms of payment of dividend and they, then this is a good entry point again to come in. They have made capital appreciation, and also we enjoy a lot of dividend payout, and also enjoy volume interest. So it so all depends on investors. Banking standard. stocks have given a lot of profit. No, they've given a lot of profit, of but also you, you also most of other companies also like the the like of Girigu, the like of Transcorp right. Power, the like of even Transcorp, the like of uh, um, 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 Danguti, uh, um, um, Danguti. Dangote Smend and also um, um, Dang uh, National Sword NASCOM. Oh, they, they seem to have given they've investors. Rallied, they've rallied, they've really rallied this year. I guess it's, uh, it's normal to have this kind of... No, it's um, normal to have a slowdown. When the capital market is just a straight line, there is a challenge. Right. So you, you need to see those cough come in. But the challenge is who is caught inside the cough at that time. Right. That's the challenge. I'm talking about challenges now. We've seen Nigerian breweries. They've announced uh, the suspending operations in two of the nine production um, plants. Um, definitely impact to some of the employees. Uh, yeah, not good news. But again, when you suffer a little, remember that Nigerian Brewery has had their capital eroded because of the effects. They were also planning to do a right issue. And also sometimes, when we, that's what we say, that when, you're, when your capital, your your, your, your operational capital begin to suffer and your bottom line begin to suffer, then you begin to look at um, 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 reducing your overhead costs. And so now they must have looked at some of these um, of, um, two suspended brewery and look how much are we really making up the, from there? How much are we spending from there? Also, that's a cut, um, cut control measures that could also help them going forward. But I expect that the market will react negatively to this. Um, that shows there's a lot of competition there. Um, so it's not a good time for shareholders of Nigerian brewery at the moment. And definitely, it's going to impact uh, most of their employees, you know, at this time. Yeah, that's the big job. Shutting down job, 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 job. Even though plus. they've uh, announced that uh, they're going to find ways to, you know, absorb most of those. It's, it's uh, going to be a workers. difficult thing, but again, they are looking at cutting courses. They are looking at coming back. They also want to make sure that uh, they, they don't have cap uh, shareholders for any longer. So shareholders are coming back to, for right issues. And also, um, it's, it's, it's not looking good for Nigerian breweries. It's not the best of time for Nigerian breweries. But, but looking at the Nigerian brewery story, um, what does it tell us, you know, about this environment, you know, doing business, you know? Yeah, this, but uh, you, can, you, you, need, you need to give it to Nigerian brewery. They've been here forever. And again, they said they are not even looking at going out. Uh, you see, sometimes when things like this happen, there are opportunities for, for shrewd investors to begin to look at if you are able to hold down for a long time. I remember some time ago, Something like this happened to Guinness Nigeria PLC. Guinness went as low as 15 naira at that time. And uh, a lot of investors threw right away from it. But those shrewd investors bought into it because the fundamentals are still there. Um, they still have their, you look, you look at a company like Nigerian Brewery, in terms of sales and everything, it was still there. But the, what really affected them is the revaluation or the floating of the currency. So you look at the fundamentals, they are still there. And so what happens is that once they have those funds back, like what they are trying to do with their shareholders. That means they won't have to borrow from the, from, from the banks. Then they will still have those profits, and if not, uh, better. So sometimes for investors, uh, when is, uh, I, like, I like saying that the, stock, the stock, stocks of companies are like the life of a man. And there's ups and they're down. But if you know the potential of the man, you know that definitely he will be back up. 
So sometimes if you are looking at long-term investment in the next one month, I mean the next one year, two years, you could not look further than Nigerian Brewery because if you look at the track record, what has happened to Guinness, this Guinness at that time at 15 Naira went to a height of about 93 Naira before you saw the slowdown to now about 15 Naira. Even at 15 Naira, investors have still made over 100% in Guinness. So I, I think um, it's for shrewd investors, long-term investors, there's no better time to be a shareholder for Nigerian Brewery. For those investors that are there, it's not good time for them. So it's, it's like I said, always in the market depends on which device you are in. I guess the same old uh, business cycles, you know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're definitely, down, down. you know, down. Okay, well, we have a full trading week. Um, that's um, next week. What are you seeing uh, for the equities market here? I still see those um, bearish sentiments that came on largely part of the week, um, especially in the banking stocks again. Um, I still see um, GTCO suffering from a little bit. I still see First Bank suffering. Um, Access Bank, I, 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 we may see a little bit um, in terms of uh, recovery because it's selling at 19 naira 60 cobos, still a very good stock, even at 19 naira 60 cobos. Um, I, I think the trigger that will happen is if we happen to get those um, half year results from those banks, it could be the game changer. And if those half, I'm mean, not half year, first quarter results from the banks. It could be the game changer. I remember some of them said their first quarter result was even ready while they were waiting for the CBN to give them final approval. So that could be, the, unless that comes in, I think we'll I would continue think to was see. Really first, um, you know, yeah. to release the, the first quarter, quarter result, report, just yeah. like, you know, the audited 2023 so, results. I think um, this week will be bearish. Uh, we've seen Dangote lost. Dangote uh, 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 men have not lost for a very long time. We saw them dropping almost 5% last right. week. So um, we could see some recoveries in some of the stock. We see that MTN is flat. Uh, so what made it flat? Because MTN is also saying that they may, be, they may call their shareholders to raise more capital. So there's not a lot of activities on those space. I don't think those activities. So okay. I think it's boiled down to what, the, what news comes into the market this week. Yeah, what kind of catalyst will actually yeah, come? Yeah, whether that catalyst will be a positive catalyst or, or negative. Or negative. All right, so that's a call from uh, Mukta next week, expecting bearish, more bearish sentiments in the market. Thank you so much. It was great having your, your perspective. Uh, Mukta Mohammed, CEO of Finance with Mukta. My Thank pleasure, Ladi. Thank you for having me. All right, so uh, that's the show today. Thank you so much um, for watching. And definitely we have a full trading week uh, next week. We'll see if the bull uh, can make a comeback. But we already have a forecast that is going to be uh, bearish. From me and the team right here at Channels HQ, it's bye for now.